Good afternoon, everyone. I'm saying thank you for coming to this event today. We really appreciate it. I'm Jim Smith from the Pro Football of Fame. Okay. Uh, we have Andre Johnson, Devin Hester, and this will be Michael here to answer your questions. We've got about 25 minutes to do that. We certainly got some fantastic turnout. I'm going to call the folks to ask the questions. If you raise your hand, we'll be more than happy to acknowledge you and answer your questions. Andre, welcome. I know there's a whole bunch of folks from Chicago and a lot of talk to your guests here. How would you describe the welcome you have received from the current Hall of Famers? How special has that made you feel about the accomplishment and the weekend? It's been uh, truly amazing uh, just to sit with the guys and talk to them. And, uh, they're very welcoming. Uh, you'd be surprised that, you know, how the guys uh, watch your career and the things they talk about. So um, it's been a very, very great experience, and um, I'm just part of, uh, glad to be a part of it. Yeah. Six months can't really express all the good up in the motion. Um, I would say it's been from the moment I, I fell in love with football at age of five or six years old. And um, the things that I had to go through and the process to get to the, where we are today up here, um, speaking with you guys, it's just it's overwhelming. And um, as a kid, I can honestly say I didn't envision them in the whole thing. That wasn't even a question of or even a thought. But now, as we get into the NFL and we play these games, and we start realizing that we were one among some of the great athletes that walk the face of earth, and now to be able to be up here with you guys and keep on the Hall of Fame, it's, just, it's a great honor. Good glasses, sir. Andre and Devin, how does it feel like both of y'all going in, two Miami Hurricanes going into the Hall of Fame together, sort of extending that legacy of the, of the youth, both of y'all being able to go in together? Um, for me, uh, it's funny because me and Devin yesterday, um, I walked up to him and I said, man, I remember us first meeting each other. And um, did you ever think we'll be going in the Hall of Fame together? And uh, he just laughed at it. But it's crazy how things work. Um, for me and him to be going in together, man, it's a tremendous feeling. Uh, super happy for him and his family. Um, and I know he feels the same. He's told me the same. So uh, it, it, it's just a great. We don't know the plan of life, man. Like things happen for a reason. And um, never knew that at the time I met him at UM that we'll be going in the Hall of Fame together. So it's a it's a tremendous honor. Pretty, pretty much everything Andre said. Um, I the guys that's in the Hall of Fame that's part of you the UM family. Um, they brag. So we, we've been getting this all week. Um, and I'm kind of in a situation where I hope the rest of the outside of the, I hope the other Hall of Famer don't really build an animosity against us because uh, uh, Warren Sapp and Michael Irvin, they really, really rub it in that, hey, we got two more Universal Marvel guys in the Hall of Fame. We getting ready to take the lead. So, but at the end of the day, it's fun and games. You know what I mean? We're all family. We, we're excited to be a part of this, this tradition. represent for him because he's been playing ball since he was a boy too and that was his dream you know to always you know be in all these hall of fames he's been in and this one is the best and it's been so amazing and we're so thankful and blessed the white t-shirt uh the time as the date has gotten closer um what type of emotions come up for you when you think about what you've accomplished being the first texas and everything that, that comes with you? i think the biggest thing is um like, in the past couple of days, I, I probably got the most phone calls I've ever gotten. And um, I think people, not just me, but um, people my, like my friends and family, and people are calling me and they're just like, Andre, do you really realize what you've done? You know, so I didn't really realize the impact that I was able to have on people by just playing a football game. Um, it making the Hall of Fame has really opened my eyes to that. Uh, not only to have an impact just on people, but to have an impact on the whole city. Uh, to see the fans that were here yesterday for um, the 
everybody I'm signing with did. It was it was crazy. So um, I was able to impact the city. So it, it, it means a lot. It means, it means a lot. Everybody's story is different. Um, I can only speak on my story. I'm just growing up. Um, you know, for me, it's when I look at the Hall of Fame and my situation, it's, we're all blessed with the talent. That's why a lot of us play football. Um, that's no brainer. But for me, making the Hall of Fame is me and the trial and tribulation that I went through. And the biggest pat on my back that I give myself is, is not giving up when I had a lot of obstacles in my life growing up, trying to get it this far, and I didn't shut down, I just said to get football. I kept pressing, and I kept working hard, and I kept doing the things that I need to do in order to play football. So for me, my biggest goal is, and my pat on my back is saying that, I'm just proud of you for not giving up. That's right. That's good. Andre, uh, you know, I was talking about having Gary Kubiak present you, just to get addressed again, what he meant to you as your coach. What led you to ask him? Well, Gary's had a big impact uh, on my career. I don't really feel like my career took off until he became my head coach. Um, he, I remember after our first year, the first year he was the head coach, he asked me, uh, he told me, he was like, man, I need you to learn everything. You know, I'm be moving you around a lot. He was like, it'd be times I even line you up in the backfield as a running back. And, um, you know, I took on the challenge, and I learned everything about the offense. And I mean, <laughs> as you can see, like when he be, when he got there and he started doing those things, things started to happen for me. So um, it means a lot to me. He's not only a great coach, but he's a great friend. Hey, Kevin, how were you able to, to never give up? How much sweeter did that make this moment? Uh, I would say uh, my representative um, tomorrow. Um, is part of the reason why I didn't give up, which is my mom. Um, it's, it was, of course, a couple times in my life where I had trials and tribulations that I did give up. And I said that I was done with it. And my mom, you know, was just giving me words of encouragement of everything I sacrificed from this point on to um, you still have a lot left in you. There's still so much out there to explore when it comes to football and to keep your head up and just don't lose faith and stick with it. So I'm not gonna give all the credit to myself saying that I, I, I didn't give up, I, did, I never gave up because there were some points in my life where I did give up, but she stayed by my side and she encouraged me in my head and instilled in my head that, hey, it's just a stepping stone. We all go through these tri trials and tribulations, but hey, listen, once you achieve that, that other side of the road and, and, and once it's all said and done, you'll be happy that you didn't give up. So tips off to my mom for a lot of things she did in my life. Mm -hmm. yes. How can the attention that uh, like, yeah, the of getting, getting into the Hall of Fame help in the battle scale? You know what? That has a lot to do with, yeah, raising awareness, and that's what I'm going to do with um, his ALS diagnosis is help other women, because when we first got diagnosed back in 2020, I didn't know anything about it. I just knew Luke Gehrig's disease, and I had to call the Gridiron Greats and Michael Dana run and ask them if there was another football wife that whose husband had ALS, and there was one, Shea Smith, Steve Smith's wife, and she had kept him at home for 18 years. So I called her and I was, it was just a blessing for me to have her because I was, you know, blindsided. I didn't know what to do or how to do it. And she gave me a blueprint. She's like, everyone's different, might not work for you, but this is what she did. And I'm like, babe, you kept him like 18 years, I'm down with that blueprint. So, you know, I just followed as close as I could what she did, and he's still alive. He's still alive. And we had a two to five years diagnosis seven years ago. So, you know, he's hanging in there. Yes, I want to use this platform for ALS awareness. Yes, I'm going to do that. I might even start a foundation after he passes. Andre, um, you talk about how all people that can help you talk about Gary. You're going to have a lot of teammates here tomorrow. Can you kind of put in a word with that kind of support? means to you to have guys that you played with in that Texas uniform here with you? It means a lot. Um, you never really realize uh, the effect you have on people. Um, I think for me, uh, this this and 
just having the support of those guys. Uh, they're, I don't consider them teammates. I consider them like my brothers. Because um, you spend so much time with those guys um, than you do with your own family. And, um, you know, the, the I don't miss the game. I don't miss playing the game. I miss being around the guys. Like, that's what you really, really miss. You miss the locker room. You miss the bus rides, the plane rides. Like, those are the things you miss about the game. So, uh, to have those guys here and to celebrate with them, man, it's going to be awesome. It's a great feeling. drafted as a cornerback um, and then move to receiver because um, teams were afraid to kick the ball to me and, and they got to the point where, you know, the coaches were like, hey, you are one of the best guys on our team with the ball in his hand. So we know that team keeping the ball away from me is the reason why I got moved to offense because teams stopped keeping the ball away from me that we had to take you off defense and put you on offense. Get fine with your ball in your hands, but it's for me. It's 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 been a it's it's been very. I'm not gonna lie. It's been very frustrating. You know what I mean? I do feel like I left a lot of, a lot out there on the field that would would never be seen um, to showcase the talent that I have. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm just blessed that I was so gifted and so talented to the point where wherever they they put me, I still find a way to make something happen. And that's, that's what I thank God for. You know, a lot of people can't say that. Um, but just plugging me, I was just really like a plug-in guy. So by me embracing that, the return side of the ball, where it, just, it was so much easier to say, okay, just go back there and you just do what you do. Um, and still be able to come up here today and speak in front of you guys and say at the end of the day, um, regardless of what position I play, you know, that's still up here today saying I am all of that. What this is for both Andre and Devin. What game do you guys remember the most in your playing career, and how important was it to perform in front of your home game? Uh, I would say my most memorable and probably most important game in my career would probably have to be my rookie year, um, of course, playing in the Super Bowl. Um, you have guys play 15, 20 years and never get an opportunity to play in the Super Bowl. And fortunately, I was, I was blessed to play my first year um, and made it to the Super Bowl. And not only that, um, the things that I did in the league, it was just talked about whether or not I was going to get my hands on the ball. And then from that point on, would I get returned? And to be able to start off the Super Bowl like that in my first year um, and run open kickoff back was just a moment and a one most memorable plays in my life? For me, um, I, I would say I, probably the, uh, the Jacksonville game was the most yards I ever had in my career, the most catches I ever had in the game. And then to end the game off the way we did, uh, I closed the game out with a um, like 48 yard touchdown. So that was probably like my favorite game I played in, but uh, Playing in front of the fans was, Houston is, is a football city, so um, just playing in front of those fans, man, it's a lot of love, a lot of uh, passion, and, um, you know, just them, if you would have saw yesterday, we took a picture, um, I took a picture with the traveling Texans in front of the Hall of Fame yesterday, so uh, it's a lot of love and passion behind the Houston Texans, so it was always great to play in front of them. 
I know we talked about trying to maybe control the emotions during the speech. Uh, where are you on that scale? And, and what's the main message that you want to send as you give your entrapment speech? My message is just basically thanking everybody who's played a part in this journey. Um, it's not about, I always say it's not about me. Um, it's about everybody who played a part in it. I can't lie, I got a little emotional when I was practicing it the other day. Because, um, you know, you just kind of envision yourself, you know, standing up there giving it. So I got a little emotional when I was doing it. But, you know, I think, you know, this is a, this accomplishment alone, I think Devin and Misty, they can attest to this. Like, this is the best of the best. So um, you, you're forever immortalized. Like this is you. You in the one percent. So I mean, you can't beat that. Lucher, this is for all three of you. Have you been into the gallery yet, where the busts are? And if so, what was the emotions when you saw the empty space where you will be? Okay. Well, it's amazing. That's my favorite part of the hall. They say that at night that the bus talk to themselves. I would love to hear what they have to say. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's the coolest part in the hall, and I saw exactly where I'm going to put it on Sunday. It's amazing. I would say, uh, it's, as a kid, it's, it's, it's a dream come true. Um, if you guys have an experience, I hope you get an opportunity to go watch, go see it, go walk around, and um, you get an opportunity to see all the great ones from the 1960s. You know what I mean? Every Every guy that paid the way for this National Football League that did something special is in one room. Yes. And when you're one of the guys up there, it's, it's un, 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 un so real. Like you, 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 still, you still can't believe it. I can't still, I still can't believe that. In two days, my face will be up there. I hope I'm not talking to the nurse again. I hope I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, my, but at the end of the day, it's just, it's really a blessing. Yeah, it's definitely a, it's a unreal, like, you kind of feel like you're dreaming. Um, when I walked in there yesterday and I saw, we got to see the space, you know, where, where our buses would be. It, I, I, you know, I'm a loss for words, but you really can't describe it because when you walk in there, it's so much history, and for you to be put in that room with all these great guys that have played the game and paved the way for the game, it just, it's a, it's not a, it doesn't feel real. I know I, I'm just speaking for me. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel real because. Your face is going to be there, and you're just going to be there forever. You know, when you when you're dead and gone, that that bus is still going to be sitting there. So, um, at the end of the day, man, we just this is a great, you know, weekend. And I'm just trying to take every moment. Man. Before this gentleman, a question: Is one important in our three Lewis residents of Canton? Uh, we'll be moving upstairs in the The pitches was, was fun, um, I would say, but for me, you got we had um, private sessions with this Hall of Fame. Nobody else in the room. And so um, when you retire from football, like Dre was saying, you you don't you don't miss the game, but you miss the locker room, you miss the the, the, the teammates, you miss every um, moment in that room, like the, the, the bond that you build with your, your teammates, like you guys don't realize, like when you, you talk about we get so much free time, we, we really don't. Um, I miss a lot of time. I miss a lot of time with my family, you know, my boys growing up. Like, I miss like the first day of my oldest son going to school, like I didn't see that. 
you know what I mean, the plays that he had in school, I missed all that because we're so locked into football and the coaches want us to be so great and we all want to be great that we, we take away from the family thing. So we spend a lot of time with, with the, the teammates. And so that brought back a feeling that I had, you know, just been in that room where we sat down, we listened to guys that have been in the Hall of Fame for 20, 30 years already. Get up and speak and tell each other, tell everybody about how they look forward to this moment of every year when it's time to Hall of Fame to get a chance to see our, our locker room, our, the, 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 the teammates that we play against, the players that we had battles every year. You know, those type of stories, you just sit there as a new income and you're like, wow, it reminds me of so much of when I played football. And that's why. You know, for me, I, I'll be back here plenty of time. You know, so I love to sit there and just listen. And that's it. To sit back and just watch all your teammates just crack on each other. That's it. And, and, and joke and, and do little skits and plays like that. It's You have to be a football player to understand the feeling that you get when you see those type of things. Very good. Uh, thank you for coming. Our next uh, here is the White Green.